back jersey. Uh-uh. I got that shit with all this, all this shit all on it, credentials on yeah, it, man. stitched in on it. Yeah, buy it. That arrow. Oh, yeah, Walter Payton, Walter Payton was the athlete just oh, before Jordan shit. was, you know, like when he was a uh, was rookie, it was Magic and shit. Right? Mm-hmm. But Walter Payton was cooler than Magic and Bird and now stuff. He was a shit, man. He was the shit. Uh, before I was a, a hockey fan, before I was a basketball fan, it was it was football. It was mm-hmm. the Chicago Bears, Walter Payton, Re- the, Refrigerator the, Perry, uh, Walter Refrigerator Perry. Perry. They had the fucking the quarterback. Yeah. They used to wear the Adidas headband, yeah, yeah, and yeah. he had the Mohawk and shit. Forget his name. Chicago Bears was the Chicago shit. Chicago Bears man. was the shit. You couldn't fuck with Chicago. That was my, that was the first team I ever liked. And then it was the Edmonton Oilers with Wayne Gretzky uh, and them after that. You I got a I'm mean saying? Gretzky and Mark jersey Messier. with the hoodie. You know what I'm saying? And um, God, my nigga. Yeah, well, you know what I'm saying? The, the Oilers were the coolest shit. And Gretzky used to <laughs> tuck, Gretzky used to tuck one one side one of his side jersey. One side of his jersey. Too. <laughs> <laughs> in the you know hockey pants In the hockey short. pants Just a tuck it in yeah, You know what I'm saying So you can't hook him You, you can't, can't hook, so you can't hook, hook him, him With the stick Trust me, me yeah, man. Mark Messier had that gap In his tooth Messier. From back in the day He had the gap tooth From back in the day And he got his face Scrape up on the scrape By the blade up, Scrape up He was in the Toronto Sun Yeah he was a thug He was a thug But he, but he, but he could score though Who was that boy saw me One of them and fucking, and then after that, it was the Mark Messi used to kick people's ass. He used to, he used to bust yeah. man's ass and score yep. fifty goals on yep. him. He yep. was a G. He was a G. Yep. And then after that, it was the. the but you know, Jays, before that, you know, Leafs, before the, the who was the shit Leafs. for the Leafs? Daryl motherfucking Sittler. Daryl Sittler, of course. Daryl Sittler. You can't talk and if you can, if you're bringing up hockey, you gotta bring up Daryl Sittler. Dale Sittler was a G. He was more of a G for Wendell Clark. But All yeah. of them. Yeah, Wendell Clark Those was a G Those guys come too. after, right? Yeah, they came after. They but Dale Sittler after. was before. Yeah, man. Dale Sittler was the man, man. He was like, he made the Leafs what they are. Like, yeah, the tough, yeah. Tough, that was the shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Sittler. 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 Yeah, Sittler. He was a G. Oh, man. You know what that was saying? the shit. The Blue Jays, you're saying? Yeah, but after, after the fucking... After the orders, them the Blue Jays became the Belfield man, like Belfield yeah, man, like, and them dudes. Uh, George Bell, yeah. Lloyd Mosley, uh, yeah. Tony Fernandez. What's my dude? Cats the taste. D- uh, Dave Steve, you know what I'm saying? What's that dude? Cats the taste. My uh, king. There's a bunch of them fucking Dominican oh my God, cats, what's man. His name, man. You did. A, you used to do the McCain frozen juice commercial. Oh, Cats the taste. Oh, fuck it. I can't Cats remember. The taste. <laughs> Catch the taste. <laughs> catch, catch the taste. I think that was Tony Fernandez. That no, did those. no. Um, as soon as you say the name, I'll know. Was man. that Roberto Alomar? No, no. Uh, it probably was Alomar. It, 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 been been, Alomar. it might have been Roberto Alomar. Could have been Alomar. Could have been, been Alomar. Roberto Alomar. Catch the taste. Catch the taste. <laughs> catch the taste. <laughs> catch the taste. <laughs> That was the yeah. shit, man. But the Blue Jays had two eras. They had an era with the George Bell in them and Lloyd Mosley yeah, in them. Yeah. And then they had the the, the World Series era yeah, the three with P- Joe Carter, three Peter, and, yeah. and Roberto Alomar, and, and Tony Fernandez came back for that era. Yeah. He those was in, those, he was in both those eras. years, I was right them years. Yeah, man. Them, yeah. them years you were kicking up fuckery. That's yeah, 92, yeah. 93. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You that's were right. I, yeah, that was like my first year of high school was 92, 93. That was that that year. You know. What I man? was done them times. I was coming out. Okay. Done. <laughs> yeah, that's when you guys are kicking up the fuck. And I was Even my first before that, call it 90, 91, 89. Okay, 91, yeah. So I'm, I'm fucking. Wrong. You I'm need a to stop it, man. I'm a you <laughs> I'm guys, dude. tell you. <laughs> we're, we're talking listen. 88, 89. See, them times now, I'm what we're talking about, oh, um, Ontario Place and whatever, that's later. that stems back 88, 89, go, going into the 90s. Okay. It wasn't like I that. I first heard, the first, the first Ontario Place I heard about was 90. 293. That's kind of that's a little early, but it was still a little late. Okay, but, but that's when I that's that's when I started hearing about all that. That was more that was more Caravana, but uh, but uh, Ontario Place was going on before Caravana. Uh huh. Cause if you, everybody always going always going to Firecracker Day. Yeah. Okay. The yeah. Caravana Day was a shoot 'em up bang bang day. Yeah, sir. Uh, uh-huh. Ontario Place was more of a brawling, mashup shit, yeah, looting, yeah, loot, yeah, running yeah. down the street, there causing wasn't, havoc. It wasn't gunplay. It wasn't no, yeah, gunplay. no, 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 no. There was gunplay. Man pit, man died on, about, on Ontario Place. Yeah, but I'm talking about that specific. When 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 um I started hearing about you guys, it was more the brawling, the brawling, the and, kicking, and kicking up bars and, uh, on yeah, windows yeah, and shit. It was more of that. It was more of that. The brawling and all that shit was like late 80s coming into the 90s. Uh-huh. 
But the more shoot 'em up, bang bang shit was coming into the like the area you're saying 92, yeah. 93. Yeah, That's they, when it was the, the more shot. shoot 'em up, bang bang was yes, popping sir. off. But the era with the looting and the smashing up the fucking city mm-hmm. after the night done, cause back then there was no security alarms and all that shit in the stores. Uh huh. You could just smash and grab. That's crazy. There was no security alarms in not, the stores. No, no, not necessarily, unless it was like some high end jewelry store or uh-huh. something like that. Something like that. But yeah. if it was like a sports store they or something, have it. nah, they didn't have none of that shit. Wow. And even if the alarms going off, what? <laughs> When's the cops coming, B? Yeah, nobody's coming for that. It's not like they got a signal that the alarm's going off. Mm-hmm. They got to be called to come yeah, in. somebody got to call them, yeah. Right? Get me? Yeah. And it would be like, pff, mad people just... Those now, the all, days, my first, all my first polos were from, from you niggas, from boosting and shit. Oh, I want to talk about them days. Niggas used to open up the back, back of their trunk, you know what I'm saying? Say, pick a pick a Rack piece. low, thirst, and holidays. Running mm-hmm. up the Macy's, shout out to the, the lowheads out of Brooklyn, stealing shit yeah. down at Tribeca and yeah. whatnot, I'm Fulton first. Street. <laughs> Don't even get started, Max. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know, legendary, man. I know, man. Legendary days. I used to listen to those guys tell those stories how they used to run up in a department store. They used to grab whole racks, like oh the yeah, rack that was it, just like this. Rack. Just Jeez. like this And just run You got like a size For the whole hood right there I'll, I'll keep the large for me Alright Let me sell everything else You know Sell them to the dope boys Sell them to the dope boys That's the only way They got fresh Cause they weren't going in stores To buy anything No they wouldn't the let way, them they the, way, even... the way to dudes Come on the street With certain things And they would buy it off Dudes off the street the low heads Whatever was, The lowheads was, was the, how people, the how the streets got fresh That's how the rappers got fresh You know what I'm saying Copying them niggas that was, was it? Those those niggas are fucking legendary. But I'm glad to see that Ralph is giving them their, their their respect nowadays and shit. That's very very cool. Very cool. They brought back a bunch of those legendary pieces. I missed out on all of them. The Snow Beach missed out on. Too bad for you. The, the, the stadium collection missed Too bad. out. On. The suicide. The stadium. The, suicide the Snow piece. Beach. I got the fucking I, from the suicide collection. I got the the the, the turtleneck. Just the, the turtleneck. The, the, I got the, jackets. The royal blue turtleneck. Sweaters. With the hats. With the USA. With the United Shoplifters Association. Mm-hmm. That was uh, that's Thurston's that, first crew. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It has that going down the side. It has the big, the big crest on the fucking on the thing with the royal blue and then the white stripe on the sleeves. Mm-hmm. Mean piece. Mean piece. But that's the only piece I got out of the fucking those All retros. The cookie pieces out of those too. cookies. And, yeah, I got a cookie sweater. I got a cookie turtleneck. With a, with, a huge, with a huge, huge cookie blown on the up front. cookie logo on the front. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like yeah, that piece is me. I seen a nigga with a green one. I got the navy blue one. I seen a nigga with a green one. It's like, oh my yeah. god. You know what I'm saying? I got oh, the man. fucking. I got the. I got the. I got the fucking. They, I didn't know it was a retro. I thought it was a new piece when I bought it. But I got the fucking the turtleneck with the fucking with the polo player. The side picture. Of the polo player on the horse and he's reaching down to hit the ball. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Oh, like that. Yeah, I like know you're talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know yeah, yeah. I have that. I have that one. Black in, and white. I have that one in black. But there's a there's a oh the, the 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 print of the dude is the, in the, black the, and white. The dude no the dude's in um the dude's wearing a red shirt with a red with a with a blue stripe and a blue number three and a white hat. Mm-hmm. On, on the horse and the sweater is black. You know about all the you know about the low numbers, right? Yeah, I know about the polo numbers. Okay. Number one is um, that's the score. Mm-hmm. Number two is the score and a setup man. Mm-hmm. Number three is basically the guy who owns the team. That's why that's the number the, three is the pieces that's you the want. Guy. That's the guy who owns me? the horses. That's the guy who you owns the me? horses. <laughs> that's why the number three <laughs> yeah, is the only piece yeah, yeah, you really yeah, want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's number three is the cap. <laughs> Number three is basically the captain. He does whatever you know what the fuck he, he want to do. He moves around. And everybody He's loves the center him. fielder. You know what I'm saying? He does what he can <laughs> score. He can play defense. He can set up. He does everything. He's the one that everybody's watching yeah, and waiting yeah. to come on. He has the freedom. That's the shit. Yeah, he has the freedom to do everything. And then That's number, why you want the number three. And then number, and number four plays defense. There. Basically, number four guy sucks. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He plays defense. <laughs> and their pieces cost less, too. Yeah, their pieces cost less. Anything with a four, it's not exclusive. If you notice that, it's a low head. There's yeah. no real exclusive pieces, dope, dope pieces with a four. All the dopest pieces have the the one, two, or three. You know what I'm saying? Now there's certain pieces you, you know where that, where that, that are that are um, less in value. Mm-hmm. They're not all the same, as in price range. You know by the piece 
determines the price range. Yeah, like already, threes, already, like it's from a piece from a certain collection is already gonna have a um, a different level of price and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like the legendary Tokyo rugby, or is it a pullover jacket? That navy blue one with the white patch on the front and shit. Me, or the fucking the Kenya rugby, the purple one with the Kenya patch on the front. This like these are, these are pieces you see it and it's like holy shit. Everybody knows Raekwon, what Raekwon did for the Snow Beach Low. You know what I'm saying? But um, there's just certain pieces. And anything from that collection is just a forget about it. Because like, every Ralph piece has a whole collection attached to it, right? Where there's t-shirts and sweaters, maybe a jacket, maybe a bucket hat, some, maybe some socks, maybe a wristband. You never know. Certain men have some pieces. Oh, I never knew they had the, mm-hmm. the shorts for that collection. Mm-hmm. Or I never knew they had the, the cowboy hat for that. Or mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like... Man, man, I have pieces where I got maybe like eight p- different pieces for age. And there'll still be a man on fucking the ground with something like, oh shit, I don't have that. Mm-hmm. But I have like eight different pieces from that same collection. What do oh, you I th- have the tack room jacket. The tack room jacket. You know what I'm talking about with uh, the ropes and thing? It looks like the tack room. Like the shit you're hanging, like you hang up in the tack room, the hat, the, the, the rope and all that thing. Okay, okay, like the... Green and whatnot. Okay, I know what you're color. talking now, and it looks like it's fucking like almost like the water can run off of it and stuff. No, 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 no. It's, it's still this no normal kind of like. Is it, is it the khaki material? Like the khaki material, uh-huh. the heavy material. And it's heavy and it's thick. Yeah. yeah. So it looks uh, so when the colors are looks kind of fadey, yeah, fadey yeah, kind of the material, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. what I'm saying is it has like the ropes and whatever on it. it looks like a tack room, like when oh, the like horse. The, oh, like the toggles. You're talking the toggles. No, the With whole the jacket is like a print. It looks like a tack room. The whole jacket is like a print. Yeah, it looks like a tack room, oh, like like wow. the where you like the stables where you okay. keep the horses. Okay. Where you hang up the ropes. You those see like the wood. It looks like the wooden background with the ropes. Hang. Yeah, yeah, those, man, those that shit's like almost three grand. Yeah, B. those are super expensive pieces. Like, goddamn, you're talking about one of those pieces. I'm saying, B. God damn. They got everything for that. I didn't know that. They had the shirt, the hat, everything. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. And they have all the different pieces, everything, everything. The bucket for it, the hat, the, the jacket. The, 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 yeah, the, the jacket is Like the that denim kind of jacket. And the jacket is long. The, the jacket looks like a, um, like a, like the a Harrington jacket. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like a Harrington jacket. Yeah, like a Harrington jacket. It's just mean. like that. The, you know, the waist cut, yep, whatever. Yep, yep. There's no play to it. There's no elastic. It's just... No. Cut. Cut, yeah. You know, have the it's button cut. here or whatever. Yeah, sir. You know? Yes, sir. Yeah, man. And the print is yeah. all over and shit. This is all. It looks like, you know, it looks like the Gucci print with the chains and shit. Yeah, yep, yep. But yep. it's like that, but it's a tack room. It's a tack room, yeah. The hat yeah. and the, uh-huh. the, the ropes and yeah. whatever in there. Me. Me. All me. Dirty, me. man. I got some pieces. I have a, I have a, I have a button down shirt with that same style. I think it's called uh, Lake Placid. Mm, I know what you're talking. And it has the ski boots. I know what you're talking. And, uh, Goggles and some mittens, and it's all over. The you place. got low goggles? You got goggles? I don't goggles? have low goggles. I don't have low goggles. I got the supreme goggles. Supreme goggles? Yeah. I don't have low goggles. Even when I seen that ad, that legendary Thurston How the Third ad, mm. his goggles were a different brand. Yeah, but yeah. But they yeah. match with his lows. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So I don't even know if Polo makes goggles. You you put the band on it like uh, you see a lot band, of third the polo they, sport band. those dudes like I was saying how you can buy the patches a lot of them make their pieces yes, too yes sir yes sir you'll yes, make sir. some polo hats or whatever uh-huh. you you'll like buy a normal hat and put a polo patch on the put hat a polo patch and on you the, might think they, oh that's that's a dope piece that, that's, that's how those dudes move out there, I ain't man. seen Dallas Penn in a while I hope he's still healthy but yeah he used to fucking make the the hats. And get the patches on patches, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And get a dope, like, Hunter's t- style hat, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And get a dope Hunter's theme mm-hmm. polo patch, and boom, now he's got a piece that's like his own signature, his own collection. signature collection. And just how Ralph does it, how Ralph will give you like a real Hunter's hat, you know what I'm saying? Like, when Ralph makes like a Hunter's jacket, it's not just some shit that looks like a Hunter's jacket, it's that's a, a real Hunter's jacket, jacket. Hunter's you know jacket. what I'm saying? Everything he made is for it's, the purpose for of the whatever purpose it's made for. for. It's not for fashion. Rugby shirts, Rugby jackets, real, everything. everything. It's for the purpose. It's for the you purpose. want dog hunting? Pheasant. Back to the pheasants, back pheasants back again. To the pheasants again. Because they're not hunting dog. They're hunting pheasants. I'm hunting pheasants. Rich people you hunt pheasants. pheasants. They I have eat my, quail. They don't eat chicken. I have my hunting vest with all the different pockets so you can hold your ammo and your different little whatever, mm-hmm. whatever, you know what I'm saying? It's got a little bit of leather on the fucking... By the, on um, the zipper? 
it's got oh underneath the arm under, the under your arm here kind of for breathing yeah, for yeah. breathing yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and stretching purpose that's why they put the leather there so you don't tear it so you don't tear it okay tear it when you give it some strength okay give you more yeah because more to put room. the jacket on it's a little that's okay and the leather said it yeah, keeps strength it gives it okay. more, it's like they sew in that piece like yeah. how they make the, the denims these days mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they sew in that piece so you can get more room okay in the crotch area or whatever uh-huh. Yeah, that piece got a bunch of patches on it, and it's got a fucking. What I love about that jacket is that well, it's like a vest. It's got the fucking a bag attached to the back range, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. the separate, the separate, I know you're the talking. separate connects at the top. I know you're And then talking. the rest of the bag has the buttons, mm-hmm. so you can just button it in and mm-hmm. attach it to the mm-hmm. back of yeah, the thing. Yeah, yeah, it snaps and it's like, on. Yeah, and it's it one of those soft on. bags, so it's just snap. You know what I have? On. I have a um, bro. Most, I have a low times, um. I would see. I see every time I see. Rugby I see. like that, but it, 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 the bottom back flaps like oh, like a like a like a suit like a suit jacket. No, you can make yeah. the cut like, and yeah. it snaps on. And it snaps on. It snaps on. Oh, and it's stitched all around I like like. I seen a nigga like, fucking at fucking low boots on the deuce. You know, low yeah, boots. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, seen yeah. a nigga with a piece like that, and I was like, what mm-hmm. is that at the back yeah. of his rugby? What is yeah, that attached yeah. to that? Yeah, it snaps on. Snaps on. Yeah, snaps on. It's a button. It snaps on. It can. For they an extra air. They never made those pieces. Like, I never okay, seen rugby. Rugby's are the shit. Polo rugby's are the shit. Yeah. When Out it of comes everything, to, rugby's, man. Yeah. When it comes to like what Ralph does best, it's the rugby. The rugby's, his nobody denim can, is okay, but the rugby's, man. Nobody can fuck with Ralph when it comes to his no, rugby's. No, no dumb hill figure crap. None nobody, of that shit. Nobody. Nobody. None Ralph's of that rugby's shit. are year, it's just leaps and bounds ahead of every everything other brand. and everybody, man. No brand can make rugby's like Ralph. No. No. When it comes to his other pieces, I fuck with Ralph exclusively, so obviously I fuck with Ralph. But when it comes to the rugby's, that's the that's the type of piece where you can actually stunt. Yeah, Just stop it, leave it alone yeah, for Ralph. Don't touch it. People who fuck with other brands, when it comes to the rugby's, they can't talk to you. When it, comes, when it comes to Louis, they can brag when it comes to certain stuff. When it mm-hmm. comes to Gucci, they can brag when mm-hmm. it comes to certain stuff. Only one I'm saying that could give Ralph the run for the money with the uh, with the rugby's was Benetton. Yes, but they're not around no more. Mm-hmm. You see how they're that works. around. They're around. It's, it's not the same owner, bro. They, it's not the same they guy call running it, it. They though. call it United, but United of United it, Colors of Benetton. Benetton now. Yeah, and it's they would some, just call it Benetton. It's probably some different people running but it. But they did have, they did bring back the rugby's. Okay. They did. They had them right up in your neck of the woods too. They did. Oh yeah. When was that? S I M O. When was that? You know I'm talking this story. That was story. a few years ago. No, up to like couple months ago, B. They had the Benetton rugby's back. The, the, the same kind of like the uh, money green See, and been, the blue. I've been copping pieces lately though, so I wouldn't know. Money green about and the blue. Couple months ago. Wow. The money green and the blue. The Benetton in the middle. The Benetton in the middle. Wow. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Yeah, man. They had them in there like let's just say like winter time last year. I think it's though Benetton probably had like eight, ten different owners since then. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Ralph is still out here calling shots. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Ralph is still Ralph. <laughs> he's still calling shots. You know what I mean? Ralph. At the end of the fashion show, he still steps out, gives a little wave. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Go back, go back. Hike with a high collar. With a high collar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then go back to his business. <laughs> he's gone all rugged. He's always wearing something rugged. He's always wearing some like jeans. Like he's ready to go in some or, kind of safari or hunt or woods or something. Big buckle shit. or something like that. You know, he, has, he has his certain piece that he likes to wear. And then mm. he'll make a whole bunch of shit for the rest of us. But Ralph, Ralph always dresses a certain way. <laughs> Even when it's like a, like a black tie affair, he'll still wear the, the, the jacket. But he's the jeans and a belt buckle. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not following your rules. And I'm Ralph, so you have to let me in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Only certain man can break the, the dress code and still be let in. You know what I mean? That's you, that's you Rach? Uh-uh, these are some break beats. Jeez. See, certain men would be in love with this shit right here, but they're not around. The peep game. I try to give some dudes a couple games on this stuff, but they ain't do nothing with them. Like I told you before. Yeah, you told us before. Jeez. See, me as a rapper, I'm like, yo, what the fuck? You need to fucking sample this and make something, you know? See, my nigga Snooze loves this kind of shit, too. Collect all this sort of vinyl, everything. Does backflips over this kind of shit. Because he's from the tribe era. That's when he started making beats, right? So, dude. Backflips if you heard you fucking playing this kind of shit. I got mad break. Love this kind of shit. And those 70s movies. Ain't no better soundtracks than those 70s movies. 
it be the most rundown piece of shit movie you ever seen in your life. But the soundtrack is like Gladys Knight in the Pips. So I'm like, what the fuck? These <laughs> 70s movies is crazy. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? What, what, Donny Hathaway? What the hell? What kind of songs are on this? <laughs> so do you notice that? I hear Chuck D and them guys talk about that. Like, the music from that era has a different kind of energy, a different vibration than the, than the music we listen to now. Oh, it's the BPMs he's talking about. Well, if you're on a low frequency, you're going to have a lower vibe. That's yeah. why we were always on that shoot 'em up bang bang shit yeah, when yeah. we were kids. Uh -huh. Because the, low, the BPMs are low when it came to boom baps, like boom -bap. 78, boom 88. Mr. Walt and um, what's the other guy that used to make beats for a boot camp click? Mr. Walt and um, Drew Ha. And Drew Ha and um, Beat Miners, Evil D. Yeah, Evil D. Mr. Walt and Evil D. Those guys were the best at that fucking low vibration shit. Forget about it. <laughs> Holy shit, the beats that was, fucking... That was all in our era. That was, that's what we were listening to. That low, now the trap stuff is high tempo. 120, yeah. 130, 140, uh -huh, 150. Uh -huh. It's the same tempo as techno music. But you see, like, when we, when we were like, when we were like young, young kids, that was a tempo. And then when we got into our teenage years... Talking about boot camp, listen. Aha, uh -huh, that's what I'm talking about. That's, that. that's the break right here. Yeah, that's yeah, where you got yeah, it from. Yeah, you hear it? yeah, I hear it. I hear it. This is the BC. Jeez. This era of hip hop. This is all the Griselda shit for you youngins that don't know what we're talking about. This is the stuff that Griselda tries to rap on nowadays. Um, what's the name of that guy? Um, um, what's the name of that beat maker? Constructor. We have a problem. Constructor, we have a problem. That's the guy that makes the beats for West Side Gun. Oh, Conductor. Conductor, that's it. My nigga Conductor. Conductor. He's got that, he's, he's stuck in that, like he loves that era. You can tell when he makes his beats, it's like, holy shit, nigga. Now he's running with a drum, drum, drum player over here. Who? I don't know these new rappers. No, he's a, he's a beat maker. Oh, he's a beat maker, okay. Drum, drum, drum player, drum runner, some shit like that. His new beat, man. But yeah, I heard Black Dot from um, the Urban X podcast talking about that low vibration stuff. That shoot 'em up bang bang era was a great era, but I guess they were out there trying to turn us all into fucking psychopathic street killers, I guess. But it was great music. You know what I'm saying? During that, that propaganda created great music, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The Wu Tang, the Boot Camp Click, the Queensbridge movement. That's when New York took hip hop back. Because New York lost hip hop for a while. When I was a youngin, West Coast ran hip hop. Khakis. In my mind, of course, because that's what I'm coming up. I'm, like I'm just sort of paying attention. Of course, because you're not. You're. 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 You got more understanding of what's going on but the west coast guys were more commercial like their songs get played on the uh, on the video stay on um, on the video stations they used to play the music videos yeah it was west coast right? i was never i was never into that nwa stuff so that's my era when you when you jumped off the porch i was still going to school listening to nwa walking to school uh, that's back that's back when you weren't even allowed to Fucking, they wouldn't even sell NWA at certain record stores. You know what I'm saying? NWA had the big, big warning on the parental advisory. Parental advisory. Then That's another. That's when all stuff came out with. Then another label on top, another warning on top. You know what I'm saying? They used to have two stickers to NWA album and the Two Live Crew album mm -hmm. and, and uh, the Luke. Yeah, the Luke's. A lot of them did after that. After them, then they did pretty, pretty much almost all the East Coast. Records had the same um, double labels on it. Double labels on it. Shout yeah. out to Too Short. All those guys had the Ice T. Ice T. You know what I'm saying? The original, original, a real original, original gangster for those 
for those West Coast streets in my sure. Of course, of course. Everybody knows I see is is uh he's OG for NWA, which is super OG. You know what I'm saying? Like does, I don't think he gets that recognition. Either. No, he doesn't get that recognition. But people who know know that Ice T is an OG for NWA. For all of them, man. You know what I'm saying? He's like, driving the exotic cars and helicopters and all that shit. Like Easy E was calling Ice T, asking him, "Yo, how did you do this?" And, how did you do that? You know what I'm saying? Like, he's an OG for those guys. So he's the big homie for those guys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and fucking... And a lot of people don't know that fucking Chuck D is a big homie for all those guys. Yeah, too. He put all those guys onto shit. Because, you know, he's like, he's in New York. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. those guys are coming from, like, foreign. Yeah. So he's showing them how Ice-T to... was... I mean, um, Chuck D was pretty much the one who gave... NWA the blueprint the yes, way sir. they look yes, sir. with the jackets, the jackets and the hats and the dark clothing and, uh, and, that and all he, came from Chuck D Chuck D and the fucking and he gave them pointers Dr. Dre on pointers on, on the beats and stuff like that that's why Dr. Dre was always a little bit ahead of those niggas because he was getting I'm gonna tell you something from, about um, Dr. Dre right now from, um, Dr. Dre ain't, ain't, he's not the originator of, of G-Funk his little brother was making those beats little brother a regulator. Oh, you're talking about Warren G. His little Warren cousin. G. Little cousin was the one who was who made all those beats on his first album. Yeah, but Dr. J was kind of giving it the final say, but he didn't make the beats. Warren he, G. and Daz Dillinger Warren, were made the beats. Warren G. was the dude who was going out getting the records. He made G. Funk though. He he actually didn't make G. Funk because he got it from these Mexicans from L.A. They made G. Funk. He okay. gave it the word G. Funk, the name G. Funk. Uh-huh, okay. And 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 he just. Ex- he just took their sound from one song that they did. But I used to listen to those Mexican rappers. They were the shit back in the day. I told you, I came up listening to West Coast. That was like, MC Frost was a big time mm-hmm. rapper for me back in the it day. It was around you know MC saying? Frost era The low riders, the slow beats, yeah. the Al Green That's samples. That's where he got it from. That's you know what I'm saying? The so when the, when, the, when the G-Funk from guys Mondo started Duke. doing their thing, I was already liking that music. When the G-Funk guys started, I didn't know, I didn't realize that they copied but I, I'd already been listening to that sound from the Mexicans. Warren G got all them records. He put a, he put all them samples, all that shit together. But the Mexicans were the, like they they created that sound. I just started to realize that. Even um, Cypress Hill and Ice Cube had their beef when when Ice Cube stole the sample from Cypress Hill and didn't give them credit. Oh, it was his lyrics. It wasn't the beats. <laughs> it was a sample too. It was, oh yeah, throw your shit in the air, they sold that too. Yeah. But it was a sample, it was a beat too. It was a beat too. You know what I'm saying? Ice Cube stole a lot of shit from people. But the niggas be stealing shit from Mexicans is a tradition out kind of like out in the West Coast. Mexicans kind of do stuff, but they in their circle. And it's popping in their circle. And when a nigga take it, it becomes more mainstream. You know what I'm saying? So that's how Warren G gets credit for the G Funk, and no Mexicans ever get mentioned in that story, right? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Even though I was listening to those niggas on those G Funk beats, and didn't even make the connection when you had Warren G with his sound. You know what I mean? I didn't even realize, oh, he just took this from the Mexicans. I'm looking at it like, oh, Warren G, this is his sound. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't even make that connection in my mind, but I'm a you. Watching these niggas and their low riders and shit, you know what I'm saying? Playing these dope beats, sea walking and stuff. I'm like, yo, this is the coolest shit, these West Coast niggas, man. East Coast niggas was just like. From my ass. Uh huh. I love from that shit. Ass. What are you talking about? That was the shit. That was the shit. And then Too Sharp was my nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the best, <laughs> best niggas, man. Love Lassa. Jeez. <laughs> Love those niggas, man. <laughs> Love those niggas. Shorts with the high white socks pulled up. House uh, shoes. Dark uh, shades. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. Fucking my whole high school career. I wore cut up, guy. Pause. <laughs> yup, yup. Cut up. Tatted down. <laughs> Badass bitches. Holy shit. And he had face tattoos from back then. Face so tattoos from back then. Stop it. Stop it. Nothing new. Those niggas stay tatted up. They're fucking, they would tat their fucking bald head, nigga. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Their nose, yeah. their, their ears, their ear, ear, ear lobes. You know what I'm saying? The yeah. back of the back of the ear was tatted. You know what I'm saying? Everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> In between their fucking fingers. 
They have their set, you know what I'm saying? They have their set spelled out in between their fingers and yeah. shit. <laughs> or their fists, you know what I'm saying? They show you their fists and their yeah. fucking their set spelled out. I love those niggas. That, that was hip hop like when I first started watching the music videos. Shout out to tattoo artists like Tunes. Yeah, he was yeah. A big dude out there, he was it's nice to see someone from that era make money and, and get credit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot of cats from that era. You know, only a certain, only certain few cats. Dapper Dan, Slick Rick. Cause only certain cats from that era that was super fresh, super innovative, and still making a change off of that. Most of those cats turned fiend or fell off or got locked up or, or, or dead, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. A lot of OGs. Holy shit. This feels like I'm watching Black Season. Or maybe Hell Up in Harlem. I don't know where you went, man. Oh, man. Fucking those 70s movies, bro. It's Tell me where the drugs is. <laughs> <laughs> what drugs, nigga? Bitch. Where'd he go? Bitch. I know you lying, smack it, the backhand. And those guys will wind up when they hit a chick back and say, holy moly. Right on. <laughs> Out of sight, you my nigga. Job turkey. Right on, uh, job <laughs> turkey. <laughs> Man, those are the best movies. And all these fucking modern holiday Hollywood movies, if you watch those 70s movies from those black 70s movies from the black exploitation era, all these major Hollywood movies copied them. Fucking like, if you watch Black Caesar, fucking Scarface took that whole fucking movie. Mm-hmm. Scarface took that whole shit. I'm not knocking Scarface. That's the best movie of all time to me. But they stole it from Black Caesar. You gotta, you gotta give Black credit. Black Caesar or even Superfly. Superfly is another great movie. Um, Pam Greer did Coffee. She did fucking. What was the other Pam Greer movie that I liked? Man? Mahogany. No, that, no was, that, that was that was Diana, that Diana, Diana Ross. Ross. Oh, she did Foxy Brown. Foxy, she did Foxy Brown. Brown. She Fox. did a lot of movies. She did still. a lot of movies. But Coffee was my favorite. I like favorite. Cleopatra Jones. Oh, Cleopatra Jones. Was that the one where she was fucking the nigga and then she pulled out the shotgun and she shot him while she was right on top of him? Yeah, she was. She was um running after the, the white the white lady pimp. Oh man. She Love had the Mako Corvette in that movie. She oh, yep, the Mako the Corvette. That's the one. And she's fucking, she's riding yeah. the nigga, she's fucking the nigga, she's sitting on top of the nigga. And like, she gets the info or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And she pulls out the fucking shoddy and shoots her right there while she's on top of this nigga. I'm like, this is the baddest bitch. Real back to Jones, man. No sexier chick, no sexier chick than Pam, Pam, uh, Pam, what's her name? Pam, Pam Grimm. Cleo Patrick Jones, that she was nice. There was a lot of them, man, back in the day. Yeah, like 70s girls had a different kind of sexy. Because they didn't have to do the BBL, right? And the Black just... Caesar movies and whatnot. Yeah, Black Caesar. Three the Hall Hard of... Way. Three the Hard Way. I got all them black exploitation movies. You know what I'm saying? And then you had those ones that were super sad, like uh, Across 125th Street. 125th Street, yeah. Um, and then um, The Education of Sonny Carson. Oh, that's the shit right there. You know what there. I'm saying? Like this, I like that movie. The second half of that movie is the saddest shit you ever seen in your I life. Love Go that watch movie. it. The first half of that movie is so gangster. Why are you in here? Bro? Oh man, love that movie. But the second oh, half of that movie. Twelve years old. <laughs> Damn. Damn. They running out of niggas to arrest. Oh, jeez. So Ghostface got all this shit. From. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. I watched that movie because of Ghostface. You know what I'm saying? I seen the. Uh, I was watching It'd the movie. Be cool, be out one way or another. Yeah, yeah. I was watching oh, the movie. Oh, like, give me the message. <laughs> I was watching the movie. I heard the fucking piece that Ghostface sampled, and I was like, "Oh shit, this is the movie that Ghostface watched." Yeah, and I sat there and I watched the whole movie. Man. I shouldn't have did that. Cause the second half of that movie is sad as fuck. I got all that shit. Fucking uh, Willie Dynamite. That's another great, great movie. Willie. <laughs> Nobody Willie stepped Dynamite. out of court. Nobody stepped out of court like Willie Dynamite. He had like eight. No, it's the Sesame Street dude, right? Yeah, that's the Sesame Street dude. He was, <laughs> Willie, he was the pimp. But this is this this is skinny version. You know what I'm yep. saying? He's like a cool motherfucker. Mine like the Mac. Can't forget the Mac. Oh, the Mac is the, one of the best movies ever. Come on, I don't even rest put in the, peace, Julian. Rest in peace, Julian. Man, he put his whole he put his whole energy into that yep. role. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the certain roles, like Julian and the Mac. Um, Al Pacino and Scarface, Tupac and Bishop. <laughs> come on, man! Come on, man! 
when he fucked Why him. you gotta hold it? Cause I got, got it, motherfucker. I already got it, motherfucker. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Man, what's your problem? I'm not a you Tupac my problem, fan. motherfucker. <laughs> I'm not a Tupac fan. You're not a Tupac fan? <laughs> no. The best rapper of all time? Stop it. No, he's not. Come on. Nobody touched more people no, than Tupac. No, stop it. I can't deny oh, it. Did you I'm ever a heard of, rider. Have you, you heard of Notorious B1? B, uh, B yeah, the, the nigga from Alabama? Yeah. <laughs> Beat it, though. Homeboy is from New York, nigga. No, it doesn't count unless you're from New York, it nigga. It counts. Biting is biting. It doesn't matter. It I'm matters, from, it man. Doesn't, look, man. Hey, when, I was never when, really a Biggie when, fan. When Jay Z stole the fucking beat from Camp Low and he told Ski Beats who they're gonna oh, believe. Man. He said, he told Ski Beats who they're gonna believe. <laughs> it's still biting. <laughs> the fuck, he's the biggest biter you can find. Look, man. New, York niggas, New York niggas will take your shit without remorse. And that's just how it go. Then they'll just take you your shit without remorse. You went down to the little Huckleberry Finn land and see, yeah, oh, yeah, what yeah. these guys are? Mississippi? They didn't know yeah, any yeah. New York didn't know nothing about this. Yep. This is what we're doing. I don't wanna do it though, Puff. Doesn't You're doing it! Doing it. You know he got bullied by Puff. You know that, right? Look, man, <laughs> Big is still the second best rapper of all time. Even if he did get bullied by no, Puff. No, he's not. No best rapper of all time. <laughs> Y'all need to stop this Tupac and Biggie as being the best rappers of all to time. Me, to stop me. Stop it. To me. How many albums did this dude have? Two? Who? Huh? No, oh, Biggie. Biggie. No, I'm talking. Li- Biggie's number two because he's a great lyricist. No. He doesn't have the catalog. He's not. He'd be number one. Then, then he can't be the best rapper. He's, he's a great lyricist. He's a good lyricist. He's not the. He's, okay, okay, I wouldn't even say great. He's good. To me, he's the greatest. But there's many before him. Oh, there's many and before people him. People use people because they die as martyrs and think, oh, they're the best, they're the greatest because they're dead. They're yeah, not. I mean, Biggie gets martyred. They, they gave him the subway card. Same and with shit. Tupac. And Tupac gets martyred heavy because he's like, they made a whole. The, the whole No Limit label is off of Tupac. I mean, come on. Tupac is the most influential motherfucker ever in hip hop. That's why I call him the greatest. He obviously not the best rapper, but as far as reaching people, because that's what every rapper wants to do, right? What's this, Max? Oh, that's um, Sanford and Son. Yeah, that's but who used the sample? Who used the sample? This is Quincy Jones, by the way. Oh, that's Quincy Jones, uh-huh. huh? Oh, Sanford yeah, Quincy Sanford. Jones did make the, did make the music for, for Sanford and Son. The fucker. I think Beat not to one of them used this. I can't remember. Some rapper. Oh, I can't remember who used it, but somebody did use it. It might have been Beat Nuts. Could have been one of them. It might have been Beat Nuts. Jeez. They were pretty good, Beat Nuts, as far as oh, yeah, like. Yeah, they're good. They're good. They're all right. They weren't like that great, great, great rappers, but they had like dope beats. You know what I'm saying? Nice. Mm-hmm. They were alcoholics. They had nice beats too, but they had mad lip. Alcoholics can rap though. Alcoholics are dope rappers. I like them. Yeah, they're good. I like them. Fucking ca- Cash was. Pass. My homie Cash was a big time fucking al- alcoholic fan. So I have, I literally grew up listening to all of that nigga sh- mm. shit. I know they shit. I know every lyric to every album those niggas did. You know mm. what I'm saying? Shout out to Alcoholics and King T and them. And, um, and Mad Lib and them. And, um, and, uh. He's another prolific beat maker. Yeah, Mad Lib that nigga. So underrated. Mad Lib that nigga. And I think he's way better than Dilla. But if you want to argue with me about that. Um, better than Dilla? I don't know. In my book, he is. I like Dilla because Dilla did lots of, like, dope R&B music I like, too. Dilla's just a... Dilla wasn't just a hip-hop producer for me. Like, he got some dope, like, Eric the Bad Dude stuff and D'Angelo shit. I look too. He, he deals with more stuff like this rare funk groove shit like this. Who's yeah, man. Who's this? Nice. Oh, okay. What song was this again? It's off the Godson album, I think. It sounds like some, it sounds like some shit in New York niggas to sample, yes. Yeah, Mad Lib is definitely one of the best producers of all time, for sure. And one of the most underrated. But I don't rank I don't rank him ahead of Dilla, though. I still rank Dilla ahead of him still. I don't know. From my perspective, he's done so much stuff. His catalog is deep, really deep. And he came around, came out, they came around the same time too, right? Um Maybe yeah, might be a little bit before Dilla. Really? Dilla because he was doing because Dilla was doing stuff for um, De La Soul Tribe, Dilla Soul. Yeah, there was a uh, stakes is high. Yeah, stakes is high. 
and but Ma- but Mad Lib was fucking with King T and the licks in them and corrupting them and like yeah, they have a yeah, whole the whole yeah. liquid exhibit the whole liquid crew. Yeah, Mad Lib's better, man. <laughs> I say I say Dilla's better, but I give Mad Lib all the respect in the world. I think he gets underrated because Dilla's like he's in Dilla's shadow. Like yeah, because Dilla's little yeah, brother because Dilla, Dilla kind of made it cool to listen to producers like Mad Lib, whereas Mad Lib was been doing his thing, right? Talk about Dilla. Dilla sampled this? Yeah. This thing. What did he use this for? Never saw a clash sound oh, oh, from uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I was just about to say, Champion sounds one of my favorite albums of all time. Yeah. Yep. There you go. There you go. Now I hear it. Now I hear it. Now I hear it. I got all the brains. That's one of my favorite albums of all time. Cause both of those niggas, I like how they rap. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're, so they're, I know this is how I can judge them because I know where they get their stuff from, and Madlib goes underneath the crate, underneath the soil when he's fine. Time, this dude is he's different man mm-hmm. he's he's a weirdo when you want to say genius that dude's a genius to me kanye's not no genius no no kanye's not the no, same no, ge- when it comes to like when beats whatever no no kanye can't talk to now people like mad right? lib yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, i heard it just before yeah. too before too with the window when the drum when the drums were going yeah that's the, my favorite part of the beat never, ever. this is mad lib yeah because yeah. dilla was rapping on it and they're all rapping on each other's beats right but Champion Sound is one of the, my favorite, favorite albums of all time. Because both of those niggas have like a rapping style that's like ahead, ahead of niggas. Like niggas weren't really, now you hear the trap niggas rap like that a lot. But in their era, nobody was rapping like that. Niggas yeah. was more structured. You know what I'm saying? They didn't, like these niggas were just fucking, that, like that's the way you rap though. Like, you know what I'm saying? The way Mad Lib and Dilla was rapping then, that's how everybody kind of tries to copy rapping now, but you know what I'm saying? I, I guess you got to give credit to Jay Z and Cameron and DMX too. They were also doing that that style too. Got to give them that credit too. I don't know who started out of those guys, but I'll put them all in the same category. That sort of that conversational flow. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Or sometimes they fucking wouldn't even like. Sometimes they wouldn't even rhyme. They would just sort of say something crazy and then go back. But it would all be on time. You know what I'm saying? And Jay-Z then, does, it, does it a lot. Jay-Z does it a lot. But at that era, it was DMX, Cameron, and Jigga that were all kind of doing it. They all kind of brought that style out together at the same time. I don't know who was doing it first. My guess is it was DMX. Since that nigga, he's older and he's a monster. <laughs> <laughs> Easy now. Jungle Brothers and them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Brothers. Oh, Jungle Brothers. and them. They like soul and them. They have tongues. They have tongues and them. Special Ed and them. Yeah, West Coast was running shit this time. Sorry, sorry, New York. Y'all was hurting these times. The West Coast was just killing. Wait, 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 wait. What year are you talking? This is this is early nineties. This is ninety one, ninety two. Because that's 89. what you were listening to. That's what not I'm talking about. I, 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 I say I'm talk, I'm talking from my New perspective. York, we had a lot of shit out them times. What Bro, year are you talking again? I'm talking 89, 1990, 91. Yeah. West Coast was running things. Maybe in your mind. In my, mind, in my mind, in my mind, I'm watching. You had the hieroglyphic yellow dudes too, still coming out too, right? Casual and all those No, 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 they weren't around yet. They weren't around yet. Those guys are like 94, 93. Okay, so so what year are you talking again? I'm talking 89, 91, 92. This is ice. So it's still like Big Daddy Kane G-Rap era. No, those guys fell off. West no. Coast is running things. No. Those guys fell off. <laughs> West Coast is running right. things. That's what I'm trying to show you, Rage. Well, West who, Coast is like running who, things. Like who? Everybody. Who? Like, like who? Was, who was running things in your mind? NWA? It was Ice Cube. It was Ice Cube. Oh, he was king. It. He was the king. He was time. busy with the, 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 I have that, r- that record. Stop he was, it. He was no, king. he wasn't. He was king. He was no. king. In your mind. He was no. king. You mean Jacket for Beats album? Them Jacket things? for Beats. The Toe Tag album? He was king. No, no, no. He was king. 
No, no, he wasn't. He was king. No, he wasn't. Nobody was fucking with Q. No, he wasn't. He was king. No, he wasn't. Because Native no, Tongue guys were on some funny style shit. You no, guys, one was You guys look like you were selling. That was, that was you guys those were selling guys. oils. Those guys had their own lanes. You guys were selling those. fucking oils and stuff. And flowers. Those, those, niggas, those were and those, flowers. Those, those lanes. You still had the G Raps and stuff. No, G Raps. They dudes. weren't making an impact. They weren't making an impact like the West Coast guys were. In your mind, because yeah. that's what you're listening to. I'm young. In I'm my young, mind, I'm young and impressionable. I'm the niggas that trying to sell the records to. Impressionable, you got the word I'm the right. One, I'm the one that counts. I'm the one that's trying to sell the records to. Rage, I'm the I'm the market. But you see, real niggas don't buy records. Man, unless you're I, a DJ. I ain't talking about no real niggas. I'm talking about niggas. That I mean, buy like who's like hip hop, hip hop. They ain't really going to records. Yeah, because you guys records. are making it. You guys are. You guys right, are making so it. So we're the ones who's really dictating what's hot out. Nigga, I'm a customer. Not, not, not No, yeah, I'm, but, I'm dictating. But if you're I'm a the customer, customer, if I don't like it, if I don't but like if it, you're get a customer. Crush. You're listening to stuff like radio station. You're listening to the stuff that they're telling you. It's to niggas listen. like me that made West Coast. So then that's wrong. Then that's wrong. The shit that shit I like is the shit that's popular. The shit that you like is the shit was under. That's ground. pop music then. D- That's not my music. Dictated by me because I made it popular. I said, yeah, mommy, daddy, this is cool. I was Coochie rap, yeah. Coochie who? Coochie who? Ice Cube. You're, then you were losing. DJ Quick, too then short. Then you were losing. They were popping. No, man, for you perhaps, but not over on this side. No, and everybody no, no. else that was buying their records, they were Mm-mm, going platinum. Juice Crew was running wild back then. Man, Juice Crew was just, all they wild. had was sympathy. Oh, no, no, no. We remember Master Ace, G Rap, Craig Nobody G. Cared. Nobody cared about those niggas. No, we cared because I we know, were the I dope know, boys. I know. So that's I know. what we were riding around listening about, to. But I'm we were about, listening to no Ice Cube and that bullshit. But I'm talking NWA about NWA bullshit. We were I'm, listening to that. But crap. I'm talking about the market. That, that shit was whack to us. Of course it was whack to y'all. Y'all were, gro- we were, y'all were more to grown. Shit. Y'all were more grown. And what's this? Oh, you probably missed the piece. That's um fucking. That's nice. The message. Come on, man. Mm mm. The message. CNN. Nas used it too in the message. CNN. Did they use the same sample for the message? Probably. He used that in the message. But yeah. Juice Crew era beats. Stop it, man. Man, stop it. West stop. Coast was Nobody's running listening to no NWA bullshit. They weren't man. listening stop to that. You. We were, I was. That weren't playing in our whips back then. It man. was I'm playing on you. MTV. It was playing on much music. That's MTV, much music. That's, what That's the watered down commercial thing. Yes, the watered down. You weren't da- listening to that, though. The watered down commercial shit is what counted for when you're a, when you're a youth. For it's, you, yes, it's he man. But it's if Transformers, you, if, but if you knew West better, Coast. if you knew better, you would have left. Better. You would have left, left that alone and if been I knew better, over I here do, with us. If I knew better, I'd do better. So but you're getting strayed the wrong way. That's what I'm trying to tell you. There's nothing wrong with Leave getting the straight. commercial stuff alone. There's that nothing, was a no-no. There's nothing wrong with getting Juice straight. Juice Crew with the shit. Dude. That was nah. the era. Nah. Y'all need to stop it, man. There's we were listening to no raw bass, and that was your MTV raw shit. MTV. Raw yeah. bass and that shit. Even a little special ed sprinkle in there. Special ed have was dope. Him. Special ed was dope. He said, have, have him. him. He said, have him. Yeah, he, didn't do mu- he didn't do much for us. He so you dope. can have him. He yeah, was, he was dope. Don't he get me dope. wrong. He was, he was dope. 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 dope. Don't get me he wrong. But he didn't do much. He didn't do much. He wasn't a juice crew. Like, no, man. You need to stop, Max. I'm telling you. Hey man, I'm sorry. Those were the days of Maximus, Beamers, Maximus, that's, Beamers, that's on road. That's and on Benz. that's on road. But in fucking yeah, and in the hip hop, everybody was dri- driving. I West Coast niggas were that driving. That was the era. That's the era. We were listening to the no NWA shit, man. We were. The, the kids were. The kids were. Because it was, you know, it was forced down your throat. Y'all it doesn't no matter choice. what was forced down our throat. You got stuff Y'all forced down no your choice. throat. You had stuff forced down your throat. Everybody has their give era. Me, give me an example of what we had forced down our throat. The hip hop era. era, hip hop era, sampled disco records because disco was nothing but disco was popping on the radio. It was pop music. It was the, it was the Bee Gees. It was Donna Summer. It was all over the place. So you guys took it and you made it cool, and you cut it up and you fucking took the best parts of the Al Green records and shit that your mo- your mama and daddy was playing and shit, and you took you took the shit you were listening to and you made it cool. You made it your own. But you had shit forced down your throat. You had no choice to listen to Al Green and Isley Brothers and Bee Gees and Donna Summer and all that shit. And then you made it cool. But I, and, 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 and the shit that was forced down my throat was the NWA, NWA the Ice but, Cubes. But there was a difference between you know what that. Saying? There's short. a difference. You, know what you had a choice because we didn't what have choice? a choice. What, what, what we're trying to say back in our era when what we made hip hop what it is today. With the drums and, then and the samples, made what it was we didn't on. have no choice. We didn't have anything else to pull to go towards. 
where it's NWA. Mm -hmm. Over the other side, you had Juice Crew and all this other yeah, kind no, of hip hop. So you had a choice. No, no, no. Back in our day, no, no, we no, didn't no, have no. a choice. You That's gotta, what we no, made. No, no, you gotta shit. understand. Like, check it, Fang. Check it, Rage. I'm like nine, ten years old, Rage. Mm -hmm. In one video, they have low riders. Mm -hmm. They have half naked girls. Mm -hmm. They got guns the size of me. Mm -hmm. The sun shining. Mm -hmm. It's like palm trees mm -hmm. and stuff. But 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 where you live don't look like that. Exactly. How do you exactly. relate? Exactly. So so I'm looking How at it. How do you relate? What do you mean relate? I'm looking at it like these guys are cartoon characters. I'm not looking at. Then I'm you not, can't relate. Then. I'm not attracted to because so I relate. Then, so then you look at them when as cartoon characters, so you don't look at them as real. Exactly. I'm not looking well, at them as the real. The shit that I grew up on was real because they looked and were like Bridget. us. Brethren, brethren. We didn't have no, Bredrin. we didn't have palm trees where Bredrin. we grew up. When you were, when you we had pine cone when, trees. When you were my age, you, when you were my age, you were watching some fucking some niggas doing some fucking bell bottom shit or something. That was everybody had their era where they were forced corny shit down their throat, and you can't n do nothing but love it cause f out of nostalgia. Yeah, but the difference is, Max, your era, you had a choice. There was different no. things. There listen, was different, listen to, listen to what I'm like saying. How there's trap listen to what I'm and, saying, Rage. And, and, and in pop, one video, different. in one video, the dude's in a street alley with a 40 ounce. Yeah. In the next video, the dude's in California with all this yeah, sunshine. Yeah, you still have I a have choice. no choice. There's no choice between no those choice. two. You You're are, crazy. You can either pick the one is palm whack, trees one is or whack. the 40. No, no. The industry, yeah, made, the industry made sure one nigga is whack and one nigga is dope. It wasn't a choice, Rage. And the, and it the wasn't South choice were the whack ones. What? There was no the, 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 the there young was no MC. There was the no young MCs. They and, were always and the MC Hammers. They were always whack. They were the whack ones. They were always whack. Back to back but to I, Chuck even D. I knew, but even I knew they were whack. Back though. to Chuck D. Even Taylor I knew. and NWA. But even I knew they were whack. The way they look. But even I knew they were. They tailored the way they look like East Coast rappers. Who cares what they? Who cares what they copied? They were the cool ones. They were the but cool this ones. is all the image that's projecting that exactly. you as a little kid is looking just at. Just like Biggie Smalls, just like Jay Z, but we were just like uh, uh, whatever people copy from their previous era and they not, take not credit. Not necessarily. Yes. Not how necessarily. It goes. It's how it goes. We grew up in an era where there was no biting allowed. You had to be original. There's no biting. Original. There was no biting allowed in no my era. Biting, whether it's your beats, your rhymes, the, the way you, the way you dress. Even the color fat laces you got in your sneakers, there was no biting allowed. In your era, None. in your era, there was both. There was no biting allowed, and there was the most biting ever in history. There was both going on at the same time. Because every nigga used to dress the same in your era, but the street coat was no biting allowed, so you had to change your shoelaces and shit like that. But there was a whole lot of copying in your era. That's why you were so forced to be like no biting allowed. Because biting was the thing you niggas did. No, I don't agree with that. I agree. Yeah. Biting was the thing. Even in breakdancing, you can't even bite a man's moves when he's breakdancing. Unless, you, no -no. unless so, you don't live in his hood. You're violated. There's, no, there's no internet. You but, can go to but, a different but, hood but, and but, nobody would know. You, you would. Because when you're a breakdancer, you go to different hoods and break against other dudes. Only that's by what's word called, of that's mouth. What, no, only no, no. By word that's of what mouth. you call battling. That's where battling came from. But it came could, from breakdancing. But you could still... Before the, DJing, before emceeing, yeah. it came from breakdancing. But you could... Battling. You go to different hoods you still and steal. battling. You could still steal easier in that But era. if you're going to battle somewhere, if you're going to go to the Roxy or somewhere and battle against another crew, he bites your style. You know that he bites yeah, your style. You're not going to bite when you're battling, but when you go back to your hood, you're going to use styles and claim it's yours, and you know Then you're, you're a biter. But nobody knows. So that's why your arrow was biting heavy. Yeah. Your arrow was biting heavy. But the code was how you talk and how you move and what you get credit for was not biting. Not but niggas was steady biting. You, we it's had like, strict it's like boom. It's like this. Didn't bite, man. It's like I'm telling you, your era was full of biting. So the cool niggas said, "Look, this is how we're gonna separate ourselves. No biting." But even the but 90% of the niggas who was out here hollering, "No biting," were biting. They just weren't telling nobody because there was no internet and you could steal easier. You know what I'm saying? That's how it went. But the code was you got credit for not biting. But Back some of these the niggas, day. some of these niggas that got credit for not biting see, were straight you see, thieves. You see in New York and different boroughs. Shout out to Grandmaster Flash, who was not the first Grandmaster Flash, you biting ass nigga. You but he's still a legend. He's you still see, a legend. You see in New York, they got saying? different boroughs, right? <laughs> different different boroughs in New York City, And right? Biggie, you're a legend too, even though pubs and took every your whole borough, shit. And every borough, every yeah. borough, they got different slangs, but put the slangs aside. Even their their accent is their accent is different. 
Like a Bronx nigga accent is different than a Brooklyn nigga accent, but they're both from New York City. Yeah, a Rex so nigga, a Rex if you're dancing, if you're so Scarborough. if you're breaking, since we're going back to back, if you're breaking and you're breaking a certain way, you know that's a Harlem nigga break. The way he's breaking, uh-huh. that's a Bronx nigga. The way he breaks. So if you're biting, you know because of the way. It's like a, it's like yeah. a language. Pete. Okay, okay, okay. So you will know. Okay. So you couldn't bite back then, B. Yes, it was so you can strange. bite. You can bite because niggas, not everybody was hip to the what a Harlem style was. And if a nigga knew what the different styles were, you wouldn't. Not you wouldn't. necessarily. If you were a dude who was going to different boroughs or going to different clubs. You ain't gonna know that, like you say, you bite something from a different yes. bro and you bring it yes. back to your own. And, now, and they don't know. They don't know. They don't know. But when a, ni- but when a nigga Earl come around, but shit. when a nigga come around that does know, you don't stunt with that shit because he knows you biting. That's all. Then they- you know to yourself, you ain't real and authentic. How do you feel Man. knowing that you can't? And then they're gonna tell you. We then your goods will be like, yo, break out that move you're doing. Look, back back rage. in the building. I'm not. Ch- we, you can't look back at your era and act like it was great. Every era had, every era was full of shit and it was full of great shit. Every era was full of, was full of shit and full, and of, full of great shit. shit. But my era was the greatest era. Well, I think my, my era was the greatest era it, well, because think, we sparked everything <laughs> and we watch everything flourish. I think my era was from the greatest, then till now. From the same era, I'm a little bit after, and I think my era was the greatest. But it is what it is. My era is your era. Yeah, we're, we're same, but and your era is my era. So whatever you guys are feeding off is off of my era. That's true. So it's actually our era. No, because I'm in it too. So it's not yours, it's ours. But you see, <laughs> you're watching it from MTV and taking di- taking these dudes over here from with the palm trees yeah. and, and, and the sunshine and the dating yeah. in Crimson Vogue yeah. wheels and shit. Yeah. And we're over here, no whips. And, and guess what? PC stairwell and, guess and what? a 40 ounce and a, and a jacket. Yes, and guess what you niggas had to start doing after a while because young niggas like me were attracted to the West Coast shit. You niggas had to start sampling different. You niggas, you admit it. East Coast niggas had to start sampling different because of certain, West Coast certain niggas. Certain producers. Because and that's called out with the label. And that's, the label yeah. wants you to have and, and, a, and, a more and, and who, of a and, club and, feel song. And who was pushing that shit on me when I was, on, when I was in, in the house watching it on TV? It was the label. Push well, then that's where you're wrong. You don't follow the labels. You follow the streets. I'm saying my influence. But no, the streets. But the thing is, though, if I didn't like the shit the label was pushing, they would have tried something else. It's the fact that my generation liked it. That's why you don't get your influences from, from um, let's just say, the uh, white man. We all get our influences <laughs> from the white man up I to mean, a certain point. I mean, when it comes to our own culture. Up to a certain point. Oh, no, all, no. We all get it up to a certain point. And I mean, everybody got to use it how they want to use it, right? Because even the white man's culture is all stolen from us, right? You know this. Sure. Not, white man never invented a thing. Even the fuck he does is still, you know, like the first fucking the guy who invented the fucking white people is a black man. So, I mean, we, we got to own all the fuckery they do. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. God is black man, King Asian. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Get it. Finish off with a couple break beats. Yeah, I might go home and watch me at seven. It's like this is all this. Mm-hmm. That's why I like fucking what's his name? That white boy. He's the best movie director, man. Quentin Quentin Tarantino. Because you watch his movies. Rodriguez is good too. Who? Rodriguez. That's the guy who did the. He did all the um, Grindhouse. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, Grindhouse. That was a good movie. Rodriguez. Was a good movie. He does the Marchette. And, and he did the, the Machete movies. Yeah, those are good. Those are good movies. Too. Dope. Those does all that shit. Too. Quentin's more versatile because he did like um, Inglorious Bastards mm-hmm. and Pam. Uh, what's the one with he brought, brought Pam Greer back and Jackie Brown? Oh, well, um, Kill Bill and all that stuff. Kill Bill, you can Kill Bill, Part One and Two. See, all the Rodriguez movies are like that. They're like that, but. They're not all kind of like... Um, and he makes that 70s feel to it, too. He'll make, make it look like the film is old and it's burning up he'll, in the side. He'll, go, he'll, go, more, he'll go more retro with Yeah, he's sick with it, But man. Quentin, Quentin will take elements of the old of school the old movies and, put and it in, add it into, add the, it into yeah, everything else. Yeah. yeah, I get you. He's a more of a smorgasbord yeah. of everything. Like I like how Quentin kind of like takes the old and mixes it with the mm. new. 
But if you don't watch Stephanie's flicks, mm -hmm. you'll think it's just all yeah, Quentin all Tarantino stuff. shit. You, you know what I'm saying? You wouldn't even know. And you ain't even going to get why? Why is he putting the sideline? And, and all that. What is, what is that? And why is there a commercial <laughs> <show> here? <laughs> yep, yep. Shit. You know, like, people don't get it. People Back don't get in the day, it. the movie theaters they used to stop so, intermission yep, when they're changing the reel. You can go and, take a and, piss. And, and then put in, and put in commercials in between when, when they're changing the reel. And if you didn't know when they're changing the wheel in every every movie if you watch these old movies mm -hmm. look at the right corner of the screen you see a black fl dot flash yeah. that's telling you it's time to change, change the reel in the movie in theater the movie that's theater. how you will know when uh -huh. you're watching these old movies oh you see the, the black, black dot flash. I always wonder what that black dot was that's what it is that's what it is it's huh? telling you it's time to change the time reel time to change the reel yeah. oh, I, I, okay I'm about to get up and go take I'm a piss that black too. dot okay I'm a movie too, bro. we'll do what we'll do movies next episode Cause that's a whole nother podcast But yeah um, What we broke down DJs and shit This episode and shit uh -huh. Yeah we were just breaking down DJs Which is like a whole A whole A whole, yeah. a whole a show to itself Yeah like a DJ deserves a whole show And we gave it a whole show You know what I'm saying Pretty much yeah Cause we kept going back to the DJ We kept bringing yeah. back Yeah because DJs. Yeah because yeah. it's like That's such an important thing You know what I'm saying Who gets credit for what Well the DJ came first couldn't have an MC without the DJ. The, the MC only came because he was to hype up the DJ, the hype MC. up the party in between the DJs who were switching records and whatnot. Yeah, the MC came way after the DJ. Way oh, after. Yeah. It was, the MC was the last part. The last part. The last part. Last, last part. The last, last part. Because even Graf and Graffiti. Graf and the Breakers and the oh, DJs yeah. were all way, way early. Way early. And the, and the DJs were the first rappers, the first MCs. Pretty much, yeah. And then they start to hire MCs because they just, you and know, DJ started getting Hollywood some money. Stuff. Yeah. What not? They started to hire niggas. And then once they got enough money to start hiring niggas, those became the first, like, rappers. So that's way down the line. You know what I'm saying? Not really that far down the line. A couple of years later, yep. the MCs that came in because they had, like, groups, right? Because remember, hip hop was 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 being recorded in parties before it was recorded on wax. So before all yeah, that stuff right. came out, like you're in '79, right. like with Wax, Sugar Hill Gang, and yeah, all yeah, that yeah. bullshit, rap they were always rapping in parties and shit, yeah, yeah. and they were on on tape. Before. Yeah, they were on tape, and they was, those are original mixtapes. Those are original mixtapes. The first mixtapes mix were the only way you can get hip hop. Only way you can get hip hop was these dudes rapping and taping the show, taping the. Taping the party and Making the tape house. At Making the tape Going back home I don't even think They would go back home And edit it They would just No sell no 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 sell it, it was just straight Sell it raw They weren't selling it They were just giving them oh, out People it up. Letting them out People dubbing them over Dubbing Shit, them I would And it went and I don't know what these niggas are. They weren't on that They didn't know nothing About that shit They were just about Having a good time They wanted how They sound on the mic Let's record the party Yeah yeah but Start catching on And then Okay, the guys. Maybe that certain were, dudes probably took him and started selling them to different boroughs or whatnot. Come on, crazy. What? There's niggas, but there was, there was niggas, there was niggas selling that in North Carolina and in oh, Illinois. Afterwards. Yeah, afterwards, because, yeah. Because like, you know, people might have been giving them out uh, around New York, but there was niggas that were like, hmm. You know, New York is crowded and niggas is like smart. You know, that's what I'm saying? you know when they've been getting those tapes after that era was done. No, no, that's no. that's when they, they were getting those. There was still niggas sneaking that shit out. Maybe not right away, but still pretty early in the process. There was niggas leaving New York and going to places like like I remember hearing Manny Fresh talk about hearing those New York tapes. You know what I'm saying? In yeah, New but Orleans. What, but yeah, what year was he listening it wasn't, to those tapes? It wasn't that's like it wasn't the year the tape came out, but it was pretty early. It was way before I knew a thing. You know yeah, what but what I'm saying is after that era with the um the DJ on the mic and the recording at the parties. Yeah. That's when those guys start getting those tapes. Yeah, because was, now that they're no more frequent. Yeah, yeah, around. they weren't getting the tapes when you guys were still just when in they, the in the park. No, they weren't. They, no, nobody no, even knew about. Nobody even knew about hip hop. No, they no, were no. just exclusive no, no. tapes for certain no, people. No. Like if me and you go to a party, whatever, and we know the DJ, mm -hmm. we get the tape. And we're playing at our house, and then whatever, but oh, let me dub it. Uh -huh. He brings it home. He records it. He dubs it. Yeah, he, because, yeah, because hip hop wasn't really. It wasn't really no thing yet. It wasn't even called hip hop. Yeah, it wasn't called hip hop and it wasn't a thing. But once it started the generating party, once that it started, night, Sugar Hill and after that time, that's when people I, start even getting before the Sugar, Even before Sugar Hill. Once the party started getting big, because the parties were big before Sugar Hill got the record. Oh, of course, of course. And niggas were leaking that shit out of New York to different parts of the town. And there's niggas who were up on hip hop, but they're from some, you know, far off place with no community. 
but niggas from, you know, New York niggas go all over the country. You know what I'm saying? And yep. there was niggas who were up on hip hop from early, back way early, 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 early. Yeah, it's true. From not the like, south, from yeah, the south too. Not like because I remember I was watching uh, the south. Yeah, Ma- Manny this Fresh Run DMC those documentary. Okay. And there's some dudes. They were like from Dallas or something, uh-huh. but they're rapping like Run DMC. Uh huh. And uh-huh. If we came out. We down and here. And they got a tape. And standing outside, and standing outside, of, um, waiting for um. Russell Simmons, Russell Simmons uh-huh. to come to the Def Jam building. Uh-huh. This is like early 80s. Early 80s. Like when yeah. Run DMC's and doing those rock guys boxes. Are, those guys are probably in Dallas sitting around and got a tape from Got a tape of, from, from somebody who from New York. came to New York yeah, for, for a party. And they were like, shit, nobody knows whatever. about this. Let me start. And there's a bunch of niggas in New Orleans, Dallas, Illi- uh, Mississippi. Premier for once. You see Premier. 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 You from know what I'm what, saying? Texas, Houston? Where they were like the only nigga probably in their own, their own whole state. Who know about know this about stuff. hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? It's true. And, it's, and the, some of them stay, stay true stay with true. the East Coast kind of sound. And the East Coast sound like, like um, Premier for like one, Premier, for like instance. Premier. Yeah. He stayed to the true sound because that's what he, he know. And he moved back. And he moved to New York. But niggas like Manny Fresh, they had niggas with their own thing down in New Orleans. I forget what he called it. And he incorporated that. And then you had Luke and they had the booty shake. And then he incorporated that mm-hmm. in down south. And I don't know how Midwest niggas got it, but like everybody had like whatever. The Dungeon family had a lot to do with it too to help them kind well, of get a the, spark. The Rico, what's his name? Rico and Wade. Those are the guys that started the Dungeon Family. Mm-hmm. Those guys were DJs. Mm-hmm. So I they knew that. about they knew about hip hop. They knew about New York. No, I'm saying for for that for that region to more catch on and, and see like, okay, one of our own or people from the South is doing yeah. this stuff too. Yeah. Other yeah. than New York, because remember yeah, they're yeah. going to yeah, New Dungeon York Fam- shows with yeah. Run DMC yeah, and Dungeon all these Fam- guys and Beastie Boys and yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So when they see their own doing, it, oh, they do, they can do it too, so we can do it too. Yeah, yeah. Dungeon so, Family is hella early. Th- when it yeah, comes that's to what I'm South. saying. Yeah, they're, hella they're, early. They, they influence a lot. Same with the dudes from from um the Bay Area. A lot of them, like like you're yeah, saying, yeah. too short in them. Yeah, too short. E40. Yeah, a lot um, of them. Those guys are crazy. You know, they had, and then they have people that we don't even know that are just local rappers. Yeah. Who are doing it, and then they see them. Like, what are they doing? It's rap, whatever. And they, mm-hmm. they, but they're like East Coast, wear the track suits yep. and everything, cause yep. that's all they knew. That's they knew. They until were they make their own. But, mm-hmm. You know, even like the the eight oh eight and all that stuff. The reason why I think they got mm-hmm. they use. They stuck with that sound because they always had that sound from Luke and back in those days. Yep, yep. It's because of the machines that they were using, mm-hmm. that they were that they, that was obtainable for them. For them. So that's what they kept with that old sound where yep. we moved off of those machines and went on to more technical machines. Yeah, yeah. That's why we had more of a boom bap sound. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And they still stay with the trap because they're still using the old drum it's machines. Old drum machines. That yeah. have those old sounds old in them. Old sounds in them. So yep. they just made that their sound. Yeah, and they, just, and they it, like yeah. the bass and shit. Yep. And those and old drum became, machines have all those in them. Yeah, because everything that these other towns do is all of all. Uh, something that New York did at one time. There's nothing that West Coast or Down South or Midwest do, or even foreign niggas do, that New York wasn't already doing. See, cause Marley Ma, when he used to DJ Down South, he used to bring the Roland 808 um, drum machine uh-huh. and play like beats in between his sets. Okay. And and that's where he got the the, the big 808 sound boom boom uh-huh. boom whatever yeah, like right? even in the so in this the, is before Miami bass and before Dude Miami Brown bass, and all that Dude shit Brown, yep, yep. so when they seen that that's Infinity they, Sound they got Infinity on that Sound all those dudes they got on that edge even in the Outcast video when the bombs of a bag day you see three stacks while the video is playing going nuts like how Homeboy was doing in between the sets back in the day cause those guys are old school hip hop their influence comes from super old school hip hop and then they just kind of made it their own sound. Whereas New York, you're like you said, graduated. And because I remember old. back in the day when World you went fine. to a pawn shop, all you would see was old drum machines. Yep. It was never nothing like if you're looking for something new, like back then, let's just say an EPS or whatever. You're not finding something like that. You're gonna find like a Doctor Boss or some yep. shit like that. Yep. And yep. all those have all those old 808 sounds yep. And, and, yep. and pans and shit in them. So now you get that. Booty music that they used to make exactly, down there, you know exactly. And Luke became a millionaire off of that. And now it's trap with the same yeah. sounds that they were using from back in African Bada Soul Sonic Forces yeah, yeah, with yeah, uh, yeah. Planet Rock because they were using those machines, those which machines. was a, uh, which was what an Englishman who was using yeah, the, those machines. Uh, those white boys. Yeah. What was the name again? 
with the German niggas or something like that. The UK dude. And there, there was a there was a group too. Oh, you're talking about um, you're talking about um, Kraftwerk. Yeah, Kraftwerk. You're talking about Kraftwerk. Kraftwerk. I think they're they English some, as well. They had some very 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 cool shit. That was the electronic. That's where that's where my dude would decide to use yeah, they were electronic. From they were one of those hip hop. It wasn't it wasn't UK, but it was one of those white countries though. And I remember like Kraftwerk. Yeah, Kraftwerk. They were dope. Cause like I remember hearing some of their stuff, just straight Kraftwerk stuff. Mm-hmm. And they're like they were all about experimenting. They yeah, because really- they made their own instruments. Yeah. Like you see all these wires and shit. Yeah. When you look at their stuff, that's what it looks like. Mm-hmm. Different plugins, they plug in mm-hmm. shit. They got like um keyboards like that too. With oscillators or whatever, you plug in different things okay. and it gives you different sounds. Different sounds. And, sounds. They were and creating got wires sounds. and whatever and whatever yeah. on them and shit. But back then, they were building their own instruments, mm-hmm. electronic yep, instruments, yep. Very fucking cool with shit. currents, current different electro- electronic frequencies and shit. Very That's why they had cool. a lot of wires and whatever on their shit, mm-hmm. and the stuff sounded futuristic. Yep. Then my body took that. You took that and you tried to make that hip hop. Yeah. That wasn't flying with us because we already had our sound. This shit. Okay. These drums and okay. these breaks. Yeah, okay. You ain't coming with all that electrical techno shit and try to make that our image and put the feathers and all this African um, heritage shit in it and try to make that hip hop. It didn't work because people in the streets weren't wearing feathers and shit. Yeah. They weren't Lee jeans. Yeah, but they didn't dress like niggas in the streets. No. That was, that was their problem. You see already how they look. With yeah, the, that was their problem. Right? They tried to be more costumes. Costumes. They were more whatever. caught up in the disco era. Cosplay kind of shit. Yeah. Yeah, they were still thinking disco. They yeah. didn't have their identity yet. They were, yeah, they were kind so, of, they were trying to be entertainers. So he tried to bring the European dude and give us that electronic sound. Mm-hmm. It didn't work. We're still sticking with the the straight drums. I think I think y'all incorporated the electronic sound into it. Afterwards, afterwards, the only thing we used was the 808. Mm-hmm. Right? Depending on the eras, depending on what eras you're talking, like. Early 80s, yeah, we used those machines because those were the only machines that were available. So, yeah, we had pretty much those electronic sounds because mm-hmm. the drums, the 808 is an electronic sound. Yeah, like right? he incorporated it, but it wasn't, it didn't take, his, his sound didn't take over. It was just it was Africa, Bambada, and then that was it. Nobody mm-hmm. else, it wasn't a wave. It, 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 it turned into freestyle music. Where the um the Latinos and Lat and and and, and, and Latin yep, dudes they would, were yeah, doing they, the freestyle yeah, music. Yeah, they were rapping boom, over. Yeah, boom, the Latino boom, dudes were rapping boom, over that boom, shit. Boom, yes, mm-hmm. all of that. It was all straight Planet Rock drums. Mm-hmm. The 808s, hard 808s, whatever. Uh-huh. That was the freestyle music, the Gino music, yeah, yeah. Whatever we call it. And That's then true. you had you guys with the sample heavy. But hip hop is really the combination of the two, right? Like bringing the electronics and the samples. Yeah, cause it, it, that's where it comes from. Yeah, that's where so, it comes you know, from. Pretty he much. His, he had his contribution. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna. But it depending it. on what kind of drum machine you have, cause not all the drum machines had that technical sound to it. Like the Roland 808, that had that had the 808 sound, mm-hmm. referencing the word 808 for yeah. for that that bass drop. Mm-hmm. But you had other other um, machines like the Oberheim or the DMX mm-hmm. that gave you the the um, the run DMC sound. Mm, mm, ish, yeah, ish, that old ish. Cool yeah. Boys. yeah, that's uh-huh. that's a different kind of drum machine. Yeah, okay. That gave them that sound, and that's yeah. what we stuck with okay. for a long period of time. Yeah, me and Fan call it the crack clap. Call it the crack clap. Call that's it what you want. Call it what you mean. There's a certain yeah. sound from a certain <laughs> era. <laughs> Where it's that like, was yeah. those drum machines. That mm-hmm. was the sound that when this dude trying to bring. Nah, we ain't, we don't fucking with that. Uh-huh. We're sticking with that boom bapishy yeah. sound. So yeah. these are the machines that we use. Yeah. But if we want to incorporate and put a little drum bass, we'll hook up the Roland 808. They get the boom, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the boom. Yep, yep. That's when you hear the boom in it, in the, uh-huh. in the, in any kind of Beastie Boys yep. or Run DMC record. Yep, the boom, yep. the 808. Mm-hmm. That's from the Roland, eight, Roland 808 machine. Uh-huh. But the other, the, mm, mm, yeah, yeah. that's from a DMX machine. Okay, okay. Trust me, that's uh-huh. Prince used to use that machine enough. Oh, Prince used to use that, huh? You know the clap that? Yeah, yeah. Yep, love that In shit. the Karis one? Yep. Or Sucker MCs, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, that's yep. the Oberheim, the same yeah. machine, the DMX. Uh-huh. Okay. 
because yeah, different machines have different sounds. Yeah, and yeah. that's how you can tell, producer can tell, okay, he's using he's that, that machine. machine. You have, oh, but he incorporated this machine in it because uh-huh. you hear the 808 in it. Uh-huh. Now, the DMX don't have that 808. Uh-huh. Yeah, so doesn't have that doesn't sound. Have that sound. Uh-huh. Doesn't have that sound. So the best producers, like how they were saying about Rizzo, were the ones who were able to incorporate shit. Were Premiere is more simple. Premiere is very, tops, very, very basic. Drums. Strip, and, strip down yeah, beat. Strip down drums yeah. and a sample. Yeah. And Even though there's other dudes who do that, but to me it just sounds too simple. And yeah, and it's like, even with the way Premiere chops his sample up is very similar. Very, very similar, the way he chops his sample up. Beat to beat to beat. And it's like, yeah, okay, I know when, I know when he's going to bring this back in. I'm always going to make it drop out. And it's like, okay. Here's what you know, here's the change up. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh my goodness, come on, Premier, you've been making this same beat forever. But the niggas who made beats that were a little bit more had more layers to it, mm-hmm. they, I guess that they're not really going as hard anymore. Mm-mm. Pete Rock and, and, and Rissa, they don't make as much beats as, as, as Premier does. You know what I'm saying? Premier's so we might think we don't really know yeah, that because we don't really know what people are doing on, on their own time, but one of my favorite producers that doesn't get credit is Eric Sermon. Eric Sermon is a thief. He used to steal Rottweiler stuff, so I'm not giving him it. Hey, man. Unless for his, for the EPMD albums, yes. Yeah. I give him that for sure. And, he's, uh, he's and, good. He made, and he did the beats for Red Man's first stuff, too. Mm, that's Rockweiler. That's Rock, what I'm was, saying. Rockweiler was around from Red Man's first stuff? You wouldn't know because he was taking Rockweiler's stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. I know, yeah, but like, I still no. give credit to... I like him I for give, like the I EPMD to a customer Havoc. albums like, I still and give all credit that stuff. to Havoc, even though I know Alchemist was around before we knew about Alchemist. I still give credit to Dr. Dre, even well, though Havoc is hard. Even though there's Warren G and and, and I don't really like Dr. Dre and, and Daz Dillinger and stuff. I still give credit, even though these you know you got big homie, little homie. I still give credit to the big homie because you still gotta have the ear to know what to steal. You see what I'm trying to say? Even though it's not yours. Or people already have the ear for you. That's why it's selling. So you say to yourself, okay, let me look here. The recognition. Here. The recognition that this is going to work. I'm going to give you credit for that. Like to Dr. Dre to recognize, okay, I'm going to steal this. This is going to work. Like this is what I need to steal. You get credit for me for that. Because when this other nigga was doing it, nobody knew what the fuck it was. You know what I'm saying? It's okay you stole it. But you, but you made it something. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, you a piece of shit. But at the same time, it's like, thank you. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, let's end it off right there, man. <laughs> and that wraps up episode five yes, sir. of this week's show. Signing off till next week. Yes, yes. Hey.